Hi everybody, this is Nojo from Thranda Design. Welcome to version 1.2 of the Just Flight BAE-146. Today we're going to be looking at the new custom UFMC and how to use it in a flight. Let's get to it. So here we are in the cockpit. Let's take a look down at the FMCs and I'm going to, I'm going to hide the yoke there by clicking on the base. Get rid of it. Let's scoot over here. So before we look at how to use the new custom UFMC, let's take a look at some options that are new in version 1.2. If we go to the plugins menu, down to BAE146 FMC, we have four different options. No FMC removes them completely, so we'll have these blank panels here. That's if you want to go totally old school. Next option is X-Plane Default FMC. This is the same FMC that you're used to in previous versions of the plane. Then we have Custom UFMC. That's the new one that we're going to look at today. But also, if you own the Reality XP GTN 750, this fourth option will allow you to have two GTN 750s in the cockpit. Now, we'll notice every time uh, we select a new one, we get this aircraft restart required notice, and here it shows down here on the screen, aircraft restart required. So let me select the custom UFMC. So what we need to do here, it says select reload the current aircraft and art from the developer menu. So that's just right up here, this second option, reload the current aircraft and art. Once I click that, it'll take several seconds while the plane reloads, uh, but once it does, then that will have changed some things kind of behind the scenes so that the correct FMC will work. So let's do that. So the first thing we'll see when we look at the new FMC is this page, which is mostly blank. We'll click the line select key next to FMC. Click. And this brings us to the ident page or identification. Here we can see our current navigation database, which you might notice I have, uh, I have an old one, but just don't tell the FAA. Um, if you use a more recent one, uh, you'll have the, the actual date in there. So next we'll go to posi position initialization. Wow, that's hard to say, uh, by clicking that select key. For reference airport, we're gonna type in where we are. So for today's flight, we're gonna do an example from Feltz Field in Spokane, Washington, over to the coast in Newport, Oregon. So I type in Feltz Field, we can see our, our latitude longitude position here. And we'll go this line select key to move next to route. Our origin is already filled in, Feltz Field, KSFF and we'll enter Newport, Kilo Oscar November Papa. And anytime we're entering something, just like in the default FMC, we type it in here, and that goes into the scratch pad. And then once you have something in the scratch pad that you want to enter, then you click the line select key next to a blank space, usually where there's boxes. So I'll enter Newport into the destination. And notice right now this says Route 1. As we activate and execute, now it says active route one. So this is our active route, which right now has no waypoints. So we'll see up here in the upper right corner, there's we're on page one out of two. So let's click next page. And here is where we can enter our flight plan waypoints. So I have this on my other monitor over here. So we are going Spokane and Yakima, Yankee Kilo Mike. And each one I'm entering it uh, over here on the two column on the right side. Uh, Battleground, and finally Oscar November Papa, ONP Newport. Now in this case, entering the waypoint here, the FMS assumes correctly we're just going direct. So we're going direct Spokane, then direct Yakima, etc, etc. However, there's an easier way. We can use airways. So I'm going to delete these. So I click delete, and the word delete pops up in the scratch pad, and I'll put it over here on the left side. So delete, delete, delete. When using an airway, all we have to do is enter the first waypoint, the route, and the last waypoint. So uh, this is the Juliet 136 airway. I'm gonna enter that via Juliet 136 to Oscar November Papa. Enter. Cool. So if we go to the legs page, now we can see, indeed, all we entered was GEG, Juliet 136, and Newport, but it fills in the intermediate waypoints for us. So that's a great way to do it. Next, departure arrival. So I'm going to click that. We're going to select our departures. So from Feltz Field, our departure, we're going to be departing runway 22 right, which is not in the list, but we have two pages. Next page, 22 right. There it is. And from 22 right, we can use the Feltz 4 departure, which we are. And this has no transition, so there's nothing here. Good. Execute. And now I can either click departure arrival again or just go back to the index. Now for Newport, we're gonna select arrival. 
And we're gonna do the ILS 1.6 via Lanky. Let me verify that. Yes, via Lanky. This will put us on the DME arc. Uh, that is the transition. Execute. So now, legs. Uh, we're climbing to 2360 and then a left turn on 190 to 5500 and then vectors. So this is the Feltz 4 departure. Then we have a discontinuity, meaning the FMC doesn't know how to connect vectors to Spokane. That's fine. We'll clear that in a moment. Then Yakima Battleground, Newport, then a discontinuity, then Lanky, and then in on the approach. So let's go back to page one, one out of four. To clear this discontinuity, we're going to click the line select key next to Spokane, put it in the scratch pad, and then we'll place it here in the discontinuity. And notice, this now says modified. So we have modified the flight plan. However, uh, the FMC isn't using this yet. We have to execute that modification first. So let's go clear those discontinuities. Now, Lanky is a little bit interesting. It actually is going to happen before Newport. So I'm going to click to pull Yankee, uh, Lanky into the scratch pad. Instead of putting it in the discontinuity, we're putting it here at Newport. Okay. And then same with Boiler, we're just going to put in the discontinuity. So now, I'll just go page one, yep, 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 and then hold that burrs for a while. Good, discontinuities are cleared. So I click execute, and now instead of modified, now this says active route one legs. So this is what the FMC will fly. Now the new part, uh, which we don't have in the default FMC, is um, performance stuff. So performance initialization. So this is our gross weight in thousands of pounds, so 65,900 pounds. Most of the time with the BAE, we're dealing in kilograms. So if we go to menu, we can click units pounds, click this line select key, now we're showing kilograms. Now if we go back to the performance, there we go, that's more like it. So now we're showing 29.9 thousand kilograms. To enter the zero fuel weight, we simply click this line select key next to the gross weight. That fills that in. Reserves is fuel reserves, so we'll want 2,000 kilograms. So 2.0 is 2,000. Um, cruise altitude, we're going to be flight level 280. Enter. And the cost index, just kind of a, a indication of the efficiency, 5555 five, five, right in the middle. So now we've filled this in. Now it says our flight plan is going to, it's estimating it'll take 3,900 kilograms. Out of the 4,400 we have, so it's probably not enough fuel, but that's fine. We'll leave it there for now. Now we can go to the takeoff page. Flaps. We're going to be a flaps 24 takeoff, so I'll enter that, and that gives us our V speeds. Tick, 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 which we can confirm. Now, uh, valid flap settings are 18, and here we can see takeoff speeds deleted because we changed the, uh, the flap setting. Clear. Or 24, takeoff speeds deleted, or 30. Those are all valid takeoff flap settings. Now, if we enter a flap setting that's not valid, like let's say 26, try to enter that, it'll give us an invalid flap position. Clear. So we'll put that back to 24. Now these V speeds, we can verify these. Uh, so rotate 97 V2 108 might be slightly different from the book simply due to rounding, um, just rounding errors, but 99 110 for rotate and v2 for 24 degrees of flaps so yeah that's pretty close two knots different hey there we go now our fmc is calculating hey we have insufficient fuel for this flight and yeah it's probably correct all right now our trim value 3.7 units if we come down here to the pitch trim that's right here so we defaulted to 3.5 we can bump it up a little bit about 3.7 units and that value will depend on your center of gravity, which can be affected by um, adding or removing cargo in the front and back. Here we can see trim value has changed, 4.2. So I'm just going to set that back to 320. There we go. All right. And so that completes the takeoff reference. We, we can look through this a little bit more. We see we have two pages. We can set wind and runway slope whether it's dry, wet, and all of those can affect the takeoff performance. Also here we have the estimated um, N1 setting. We have it uh, here too, 93.7. That comes from our TMS. So if we turn this on, 
turn it to take off. And we're actually, what is that, 16 degrees? It might not change it. But if the temperature was higher, 92.9, then we see it'll reflect that value. So that's the basics of setting up the FMC. Let's take a look next at some of the in-flight changes we can do um, to, to change our flight plan and stuff. So now that we're comfortably in the climb, uh, so we have on the HSI switch here, it's in the up RNAV position, meaning it's the uh, uh, FMS that is our radio source. And here we're in LNAV mode. And right now we're in indicated airspeed hold mode with the altitude arm, so it's gonna fly us at 250 knots up to our altitude. So LNAV mode will just follow the um, FMC course. Now here on the front, on the HSI, we have the DME, so we're 122, or sorry, 121.6 nautical miles from our next waypoint, which is Yakima. And we can tell because it's uh, magenta colored, 120. Now, this is important to note, we have this split switch up here. If this switch is in the nav one position, then this DME will show, it will be the DME distance from the nav one radio, which in this case, we don't have anything tuned in. Uh, so we're not receiving any DME, so it shows zero. So if we want DME to show from the FMC, this needs to be in the split position like that. So then we get our DME. So let's take a quick look at the FMC. We're gonna make uh, a couple course changes or uh, route changes. So for example, let's say ATC told us proceed direct to something else. So I'm just gonna type in BIL, which is Billings, it's like 800 miles away. And if I place it here on the top one, then we see we have our modified route which the aircraft isn't, do anything, isn't doing anything different yet. It's still flying our route. Um, and we have a discontinuity. So it's asking us basically, do you want to do this? Are you sure? Um, in this case, we don't. So it's modified. It gives us the option to erase. So if I click erase, then it just goes back to our active route. So that's good. Now, secondly, if we wanted to add a waypoint in between here, so say we're going Yakima to Battleground, what if for some reason we wanted to go Yakima to Ellensburg to Battleground? In that case, we would type Ellensburg into the scratch pad and then we'd place it here. So you click on the waypoint that you want to place something in front of. So now we would be Yakima, Ellensburg, clear the discontinuity, Battleground. So that is a way that we can modify our route. Uh, similarly, if we have an, uh, a waypoint in here that we want to remove, like let's say we want to remove Ellensburg. We click delete. Oh, whoops, sorry, it's asking us to uh, modify it. Let's just execute this. So now this is our active waypoint. So now Ellensburg, let's remove that, click delete and delete next to Ellensburg. So now we have a discontinuity because we've removed it. We're gonna now connect Battleground to Yakima, execute. So that is how we can modify our route. So now that we're in cruise, let's talk a little bit about VNAV planning. So here we can see uh, we're currently en route to Yakima and we're 50 nautical miles from Yakima, uh, 49 now. So this one will be ticking down. From Yakima to Battleground will be 101. From Battleground to Lanky will be 77 miles and so on and so forth. So let's say hypothetically here at Lanky intersection, which is on the ILS 16 uh, instrument approach procedure. Uh, let's say we wanna be, uh, maybe we're given a speed restriction of 250 at Lanky. In that case, we could type in 250 slash and enter it here. And that gives Lanky 250. And then 10,577 is the calculated altitude from cruise then to meet 4,000 feet as we're um, on the DME arc. I'm gonna undo this, erase. So now let's say maybe at Lanky, we're given an altitude restriction of, uh, let's say 7,000. So 7,000, and we put the slash in there first. That tells us that it's an altitude. Notice how it automatically set the speed restriction as 250 because the FMC knows below 10,000 feet, our speed restriction is 250 knots. So in this case, yeah, I think I'll go with that. We'll execute, the screen goes blank for a minute. There we go. So now we have a, uh, an altitude restriction at Lanky intersection uh, of 7,000 feet. And since we entered this speed or altitude restriction of 7,000 feet, we see it's calculating at battleground will actually be a little bit below. We'll have to start our descent before then. So if we go to the progress page, click, then this gives us our progress. So we're heading to Yakima. Uh, it's 36 miles now. We're estimating the time we'll be there at 2250 Zulu. 
and will have 6.3 tons of fuel. Next, top of descent. So this tells us when we're going to begin our descent, and we'll use this with the VNAV mode in, in just a minute. We'll skip ahead to that. Um, but basically it's telling us we're 130 miles from top of descent. We'll expect to start that at 2304 Zulu. And as we get closer, th this number might change a little if our ground speed changes because of winds or so on and so forth. Uh, but it's a good estimate. So let's skip ahead and use VNAV to begin our descent. Okay, we now have eight miles to go until the top of descent. So let's get our autopilot set up so we can use VNAV to uh, do this. First things first, we're gonna set our altitude down to, what altitude are we going to? 7,000. Uh, so we'll set this to 7,000 and we're gonna arm that. Next, we're gonna come over here to VNAV. Boop, VNAV is on and it's actually starting its descent right now uh, to get onto the course. Um, but then once we reach our top of descent, we will, uh, it will follow that course down. Uh, and so we should reach, I believe it's Lanky. Yep, Lanky at 7,000. Progress. Uh, there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that quick look at using the new custom UFMC that's in version 1.2 of the BAE. Uh, let me know if there's any other specific functions that you'd like a video for. I can see if I can put that together. And uh, just one final reminder, make sure you remember to turn this RNAV switch back to NAV if you're going to try to fly an ILS. I totally messed myself up with that earlier. So anyway, hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching. I will see you all later. Bye. Waiting for the thing to go away. Do 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 do